But right off the top, we'll start by focusing on another member of this year's draft class. As the Giants selected corner Rodarius Williams out of Oklahoma State in the sixth round. And we are now joined by a man who coached him for the last three seasons with the Cowboys from 2018 to 2020. None other than Oklahoma State defensive coordinator Jim Knowles. Coach, you got Lance Meadow and Jeff Fiegels here on Giants.com. Big Blue Kickoff Live. Greatly appreciate the time today. Hope you and yours are safe and healthy. How's everything on your end? Going great. Um, you know, finished, finished spring ball. Uh, getting ready to start up recruiting here after COVID, which will be a, which will be a good thing for us. Absolutely, and a sign that we are inching closer to normalcy across the football landscape. But one of the reasons why we wanted you, of course, on the program is to delve more into what Rodarius Williams is going to bring to the New York Giants. So, Coach, I want to start when you first crossed paths with him because you came aboard in 2018 when you took over as defensive coordinator. He was already a starter in 2017. What were your first impressions of Rodarius Williams, and how far along has he come since you began working with him? Well, my first impressions uh, were that he was, you know, very talented. He had, he had, he had the frame, you know, he had the skills um, to be a corner who you could put on an island and, um, you know, trust that he was going to be able to lock, lock somebody down. Now, um, you know, my, my early questions with uh, Lee Lee, and that's what we call him, Lee Lee, um, you know, where... Was he going to be able to handle it uh, mentally? You know, he was a very even keel, easy going guy. Um, but as I delved more into his background, he had really overcome a lot. So it was it was uh, the initial uh, feeling was that he had the skills, and uh, now we were just going to have to develop, uh, you know, his confidence and his uh, mental capacity at the corner position. Uh, Coach, hi, it's Jeff Beagles here. I um, appreciate you joining us uh, this morning. I, we really do about taking the call. Um, Rodarius is, uh, obviously, I know he probably gets old of hearing, it gets old him hearing about his brother, Greedy Williams, who actually plays in the National Football League. Um, aside from that, you know, one thing that was impressive to me looking at him um, and some of his statistics is that he was a, a guy that started four years and never missed a game. And I think that, you know, at the NFL level, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty good. Talk to me a little bit about his durability and, um, you know, a little bit about how his brother, I'm sure, is going to be able to help him transition himself into the NFL. Yeah, he's, uh, Lily is a guy who's going to show up every day uh, for work, which, you know, as you're talking about, that, uh, that ability to, to maintain um, and be durable in our sport is, is a big deal. Um, he, he fights through uh, injuries. Um, he, he seems to be a guy who, who handles the contact well and the aggressiveness of the game. Um, you know, never complains. He's really the, he's really the kind of player that you want to have on your team because you can count on him. And uh, I know he's close to his brother, and I know they talk a lot, and he'll be able to pick up a lot of tips from him in terms of how to make the transition from uh, into the NFL. Coach, speaking of his experience, one of the things that he was asked a lot since he joined the Giants is the fact that he's 24 and is going to turn 25 in September. And most people say, well, wow, that's pretty old for a rookie in the National Football League. On the flip side, you could argue, well, his maturity level is above and beyond what a typical rookie is. I'm curious, how much of an asset was his age and the fact that maybe not just from a football perspective, but from a life perspective, perspective he brought a little bit more to your locker room than the typical college player his maturity is a huge asset um you know if he's a little bit older than a normal rookie uh it's definitely a plus because he has been through um a lot in his life he's overcome a lot personally and i have seen his growth like i said i I knew he had the talent from the beginning but i have seen his growth um you know as as a mature young man who understands uh, life and what it takes to succeed and the work that needs to go in. And, you know, that light bulb went on, you know. So you're getting a guy who is ready-made and prepared to to handle being, being a professional. Uh, Coach, so I, I know that you really relied on him um, during the season, probably, you know, putting him on one of the best receivers and playing a lot of man coverage. Uh, you know, Coach... Uh, Patrick, Pat Graham is the defensive coordinator. Does like to play a lot of man coverage. Talk to me a little bit about his skill set. There is he able to uh, play a little bit of a slot? 
is he a, a true cornerback outside? I know he's big, he's six foot, so that's a good thing. Yeah, we never had him in the slot. Um, I certainly wouldn't put it past him, but I couldn't comment on uh, what he would do there. I know uh, on the outside with the matchups and the length of receiver that we get nowadays, and I, and I know they get in the NFL, Lee competes. You know, he competes at the line of scrimmage. Um, he's able to play press and off equally well. He's learned how to uh, read offenses and, you know, pre-snap, identify uh, what the offense is trying to do. He's just grown a lot in terms of his study of the game. But physically, uh, he's not going to have any problem competing at the line of scrimmage in man coverage or at the end of the route. You know, he has that length and uh, ability to finish. We're talking with Oklahoma State defensive coordinator Jim Knowles, who coached sixth-round pick for the Giants, Radarius Williams, over the last three seasons in college. Related to his coverage skills, I think the number that jumps off the page, Coach, is 33 passes defensed over his career in those 48 straight starts that he made. What is it about his skill set that he was so active around the football and he was able to make plays on the ball? You know, uh, vision and hands being able to put those two together, you know, uh, and and also that ability not to flinch, right? I mean, that uh, that happens to a lot of DBs where, you know, they're in great position, but um, at the end of the route, you know, there's that there's that little bit of flinch, that, that trip, that slip. Um, you know, he has the ability to play through the hands till the end of the play. Very calm demeanor. You know, and that's what you want out of a, a corner. You know, very calm, very confident, uh, never, never loses his composure. So uh, when you have a guy like that who has the skill, but he has that uh, intensity, focus to finish the play, I think he got a good player. You know, there's a lot that goes into defending a pass. And I know that eyes and vision and hands, all that goes into it. Um, you know, with all of those pass defense defense you know he had two interceptions so I'm, I'm guessing that that's something he needs to work on a little bit more coming into the next level um i also have noticed that he's actually a very very good tackler something you definitely need out of a cornerback in the national football league um coach tell me a little bit about what his best asset will be and what he definitely needs to be as a six rounder there's obviously things there that the team is looking to develop down the road what are some of those things well, his best asset, like I said, is that he, he's he's going to uh, show up for work every day okay. with uh, the, the right attitude and and the right demeanor to learn. He's got you know, anytime you make the jump up, he's going to have a lot to learn. But he has that attitude. You know, you're going to everybody in the NFL is is great, right? So, uh, what will separate him is is he has that that demeanor and that confidence to go to work every day, get better, to listen to what the coaches are teaching and um, and learn, you know, because his learning curve is is really good. I mean, he, he picks things up quickly, and uh, and you don't have to worry about him not not understanding understanding your coverages. Um, yeah, like you said, you know, what he'll need to work on in the NFL is um, uh, becoming uh, more productive in terms of the picks. Now, you know, you you. We put him in position, in press position a lot, you know, where you're just not going to get a lot of opportunities for interceptions. You know, sure. but there's going to be a lot more um, position uh, times in the NFL where he's off, you know, where he's going to be uh, in more zone coverage, and he'll, he'll have the chance to greet the quarterback. And, and, I, and I'm, I'm confident he'll be able to pick that up, but he's going to he's gonna be have, to, have to show that you know, from the jump, the ability to break on the ball from an off position rather than being up close all the time. Coach, one of the things that Jeff just hit on was the fact that he received a very high grade in terms of his tackling by Pro Football Focus. He was ranked actually fourth best in the FBS amongst corners. And as you can attest to in college and probably even more importantly at the NFL level, they expect those secondary players to assist in terms of stopping the run. 
How much has he grown in that area, and how unique is that for a player to at least be reliable and consistent in that department when you, to your point, really asked him to go out on an island and cover down the field? Yeah, whether it's in the NFL or college, right, um, offense are going to try to put your corners in, in position to make the tackle, you know, to be the extra guy where the ball is bounced to because they think they can win that matchup. And, and um, corners don't get to work on tackling a lot, but we, we – we placed an emphasis on it, and, and some guys are just natural, right? That, that uh, you know, you put them in press a lot, you put them out there, you say defend the pass, be on an island. You know, that's such a tough job, um, and, and time-consuming in those techniques. And then you just have some guys that are naturals that, um, you know, they, they show no fear. They're, they're, they're willing to come up and get into the, get into the mix and, and, and the muck at the line of scrimmage, and, and that that's a that's a fearless job. Some guys just have it, you know. Rodarius has it. Uh, he, he he's confident in his contact skills, and um, he's willing also to do it. Uh, coach, also being a six round draft pick and a guy that's really um, has some things to work at and to compete to get on the field as a starter. You know, that's going to be very difficult in the first two years or what have you of his career. Um, therefore, that leads me to the special teams aspect because this is where he's going to have to really earn his, his keep. And what are some of the things that he did at, at Oklahoma State on special teams that would be able to help him uh, transition to the Giants this year? Yeah, he's, he's excellent in coverage, you know, uh, whether it's from a punt or kickoff standpoint. And he is... Uh, you know, willing to do the work on punt return in order to defend the gunners or uh, play at the line of scrimmage. He's just, you know, a lot of times to me, special, you know, because everybody has the ability in the NFL, special teams comes down to willingness and attitude and capacity to learn the scheme. And he's got all of those. So I think he's going to make, he's going to make an early impression in that, in that area. Another aspect in developing a young player is the competition that they're going to go up against in practice every day. And you look at the Giants receiving core, they certainly have a lot of talent that they brought in via the draft as well as free agency. And he went up, I'm assuming, coach, against a guy like Tylen Wallace in practice every day who was just drafted by the Ravens in the fourth round. How much did that competition in practice prepare him for what the Big 12 really offered on a weekly basis when you're going up against some of the top offenses in all of college football? Yeah, you're going to see um, shot after shot, deep ball in the Big 12 all the time. It's constant, um, and, and particularly with our own offense in practice. So your point is right on. I mean, he went up against great receivers every day in practice and, and an offense that was going to try to take you deep all the time, you know, and that's, um, that's a tough job. I mean, you have to be on point every single play and that improves your, your skills tremendously. So he's, he's a guy who likes to compete. You know, you don't have to ask him to get into a drill. He's always jumping up there. First in line. He's one of those guys always wanting to go against the best, always wanting to get better. And, um, I think I think he's going to be a great practice player. You know, Coach. One of the, one of the big things about um, you know the transition for players making it to the next level is to be able to have you know their character. And teams like to look at that. I, obviously, he seems to be a really nice young man, uh, very well mannered. I don't know much about his family life, but you know, I think that being invited to the Senior Bowl, the Giants were able to you know really get a chance to talk to him and and speak with him and. Really, with the COVID era, it's, it's very difficult um, this year because of just the, the limit that the players and the scouter, scouting departments had. Uh, how big was that for him to get invited to that senior bowl, and do you think it had a huge impact on him going to the Giants? I do. You know, I mean, we see the same challenges in recruiting in the COVID era that I'm sure the NFL saw. You just don't, you just don't get to know guys as well on the right, right. So that was a... That, that, that was a chance for him, for him to shine. Uh, there's, there's only so much you can pick up on film. You know, coaches want to know what makes you tick. You know, what's your character? What are the things that drive you in life? And uh, you don't get to know that without getting 
be a lot of water. So. Plus, he got to go against That's some really good them. receivers, too. Yeah, yeah, absolute great competition. And just, the, you know, the day-to-day of being around someone. But he's a he's an excellent young man, you know. He's tough uh, upbringing. He's overcome a lot. And like I said, he had, he, he is always going to do the right thing. He's, he's and he's he's quiet but confident and just like I said, he doesn't flinch in, in adverse situations and, and that's what you need in the corner. Well, and speaking of the senior bowl coach, as Jeff just mentioned, one of the things he said to the New York media after he was drafted that he felt good about the impression he left with the Giants and wasn't surprised at all that the Giants ultimately selected him. I'm bringing that up because I'm curious from your perspective, and you talked about how recruiting has changed so much during COVID. How much more interaction would you say you had perhaps with NFL teams during the draft process this year compared to previous years, mainly because of the fact that they weren't having the luxury and access to the players, so they needed to rely on more of feedback from you since you're around these guys all the time. Yeah, absolutely. A lot more phone calls. And uh, I empathized with the the coaches and the scouts because there was only so much they could learn. You know, so there's a lot more phone calls through the draft and during the draft, you know, I think everybody was 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 working with a lot less information than they've had in the past. So uh, I felt like the college coaches were uh, more of the process than we had than we had been. Coach, in terms of your other connections, I know we've been focusing on Radarius Williams, but interestingly, as I was reviewing your resume. Before Oklahoma State, you were at Duke as the defensive coordinator, and the Giants have a quarterback that I believe you crossed paths with for a few years, his first three seasons in the league, and Daniel Jones from 2015 to 17. I know some time has passed since, and you've been focusing on other areas, but I'm curious what your interactions were like going up against Daniel Jones in practice every day, and what has ultimately become of him with this opportunity with the New York Giants? Yeah, player uh, played scout team quarterback so he uh he drove me crazy he, he, was, he was a guy yeah yeah i mean really as a true freshman which was the only time you know he was on uh, scout team as a true freshman i mean he put some balls in some places that were just uh outstanding you know i would look at coach cutcliffe and he'd like yeah and i wanted to yell at the defense but um you know he just he showed right he showed right from the start um, his ability to place the ball where other people couldn't. Uh, his yeah, and then being around him for a couple of years, just to call you know, he, you know, and I was uh, at Ole Miss when Eli was there, so um, it was it was really 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 very similar guys. I mean, mm-hmm. quiet, quiet, confident, knowledgeable, you know. Always, always in control of their emotions and the situation. And um, you know, I was a huge fan of Eli, and, and, and the same with Daniel. You know, going against those guys every day in practice, you could, you know, every defense has a hole in it, and um, they were able, always able to find it. You know, and uh, and I and I remember uh, right when Eli got uh, I ended up with the Giants. I, I, I became the head coach at Cornell, so I was in New York. So a lot of people were obviously asking me about about him, and I said, you know, he'll, he will win you a Super Bowl if you give him time, you know. And I and uh, that turned out to be correct. But and, and, <laughs> and I feel I feel the same about Daniel because they're just that they're they're that guy that doesn't come along very often, who has incredible talent, but also knows how to um, manage a, uh, an offense. And, and handle the pressure because you know the pressure is something that can get everybody. In. And Daniel's a guy who, who always has balance and uh, is, is a student of the game, and, and he's a good in your team. Well, Coach, your soothsayer ways were on point, and my co-host Jeff Fiegels is very thankful for your projections because he has a Super Bowl ring thanks to Eli Manning. So oh, yeah. you are on point. There you go. <laughs> He also got my number, too. I gave him number 10. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, gratefully, gratefully. 
Right, I'm sure you were happy to do that, yeah. Oh, yeah, I was, it, it, was, it worked out for the best, trust me. Yeah, it was good. I'm originally from Philly, Jeff, so... Oh, boy, okay. Uh, yeah, so I, All I, right, I, cool. I'm, I'm from the area. We got a history <laughs> there, that's right. So, yeah, I wish those teams, when I was with the Eagles, I wish we were we had gone a little bit further in the uh, in the playoffs if we could because we were, had some good teams there. I just couldn't, couldn't push it past that. But um, one, one last question for me about uh, Daniel Jones. You know, he's got an innate ability to really throw the deep ball. And, you know, coming in, a lot of people didn't really feel like he had just a, a great arm or this and that. But And he may not be have a great arm. But the fact is he has really good touch on the ball. Has he always shown that, able to throw the ball and have touch on the long ball? Absolutely. His first year, he was at Duke, like I said on scout team. It was noticeable, you know, to be able to, to hit that skinny post or the dig, you know, 20, 25 yards down the field with velocity and placement, you know, uh, where, where only the receiver could catch it. I mean, you would shake your head sometimes. I would, you know. And as I'd be ripping the defense, I'd be like, Deep down, I'd be like, wow, I hope we don't face a quarterback who can throw that ball. Because a, lot of times, a lot of times it was indefensible. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not an expert in arm strength, but I know going against him all the time, accuracy and um, velocity and placement, um, you know, all, always is hard to defend. And he's got that. We're talking with Oklahoma State defensive coordinator Jim Knowles. Coach, before we let you go, you piqued my curiosity at the beginning, so I think this is a perfect way to circle back. You said that you called Radarius Williams Lele, if I heard you correct. I'm just curious how that nickname came about, and is that something that do you think Giants fans will be open to calling him or he will be open to hearing on the next level? Yeah, I think so. I, could, I couldn't tell you how it came about. Like I said, he was, he was here when I got here, and he... he he has started every single game that I've been at Oklahoma State, so I don't really know uh, what it's gonna what it's gonna be like without him. But um, <laughs> I knew I knew him I knew him from the start as Lee but I, I can't give you the history. But it might be something you guys want to want to hit him up with because um, that's how he's known. You know, I don't think I've ever called him Rodarius one time. Well, that is a neat story, and we appreciate the intel because that will certainly be something that I guarantee you we will look into here moving forward during the course of his rookie campaign as Jim Knowles with us here on Giants.com, the Oklahoma State defensive coordinator who coached sixth-round pick Rodarius Williams for the last three seasons in college. Well, Coach, we can't thank you enough. We greatly appreciate the time and the insight. Best of luck in the upcoming season as well as the recruiting period, and we look forward to talking to you down the road. Thanks again. Thanks so very much, Jim. All right, thanks, guys. See ya.